uh, one man who knows more than a thing or two about life with the Springboks is Velum Alberts, known for his barnstorming runs and regarded as one of the most lethal defenders in the game. The bone collector, as he's known, has 43 caps for South Africa. He's now playing for Stade Francais over in France. And Lance Santos caught up with Alberts over a coffee in Paris. Life in Paris, you moved uh, a couple of years ago now. Uh, it is very different to the beaches and the, the jungle and lovely life that is Durban. Uh, how was yeah, it moving sure. across? No, I mean, it's a, it's a huge adjustment, but it's, it's also fun. It was a new challenge for myself and my family. And uh, we're trying to enjoy uh, what Paris has to offer. Sometimes it's difficult. I mean, obviously, firstly, it's a big language barrier. Um, we're still struggling with our French and uh, a big culture uh, change as well. But uh, we're trying to embrace it and uh, just to um, enjoy life and uh, yeah, enjoy every moment that we have here. And what do you miss the most? I mean, I've seen on your Instagram uh, before, you know, at the uh, Stad pre-season, you're always at the front of the bar, the barbecue. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the weather is, it doesn't allow you a lot to have a, a, a good braai. So when the sun is shining, I'm having a braai, sometimes five times in a week because it's the only sunshine you have. So yeah, I think the weather is mainly a big thing and then friends and family as well. Um, it's not easy to be far from friends and family. What's it been like for you in terms of what did you expect coming here and what's been the reality? Yeah, I think uh, I didn't really know what to expect, although I had a couple of friends that was, that was playing here for a couple of seasons already, but no one can really prepare you for, for life in France, for living in Paris, uh, playing for French rugby club in the, in the top 14, um, because there's just, it's just different from uh, crazy referee decisions to crazy weather and uh, frozen fields and traveling to play in Budapest or wherever. Do the French referees talk to you in French? Um, yes, yes. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what they say? I just uh, make like I do. <laughs> The, the thing is, with, the, with what, what makes top 14 so interesting is, if the top of the log club play the bottom of the club, uh, bottom of the log club, away, it, it's it's always a 50-50. So it, at least half of the games are really interesting. You know, that it, it can be a, a, a upset result. So it's always interesting. What was in the forefront of your mind when you made the decision? And I mean. You have to explain to people back home, it is a huge decision. Your whole life spent in South Africa to just yeah. up and move. It's not just a sporting financial decision, is it? In my case, I had a good couple of years in playing in South Africa. Um, I was fortunate en enough to represent the Springboks for a good couple of um, years. And uh, after that, it seems like there was a, a change in, uh, obviously there was going to be a change in management. So in my case, I felt the uh, Springbok rugby was a little bit unstable. I was not sure of my future um, uh, under under the new management and uh, in South Africa. And I think it was, and I had a couple of good offers overseas. And I mean, rugby is professional. Uh, it is it is uh, your job. And uh, I thought it's the best uh, decision for myself and for my family to to uh, move overseas and to experience something new. To um, but to have a new, uh, different life, get used to a different lifestyle, uh, expose us to different cultures, different language, different countries. And do you think South African rugby's got it right in terms of now moving to the fact of the 30 cap rule? So if you have over 30 caps and you live abroad, you can still be picked for the box, albeit they don't seem to be looking for those box. I don't think even the guys will stay for 30, to get 30 caps before they move if they get a good opportunity because it seems like the way which SA Rugby is going, um, the people would just, uh, the players would look after themselves and make sure they have a good future. And uh, your future with the box, have you, is that it done? I think you can never, you can never decline that, uh, that phone call. But um, honestly, I think that uh, there's, a gr there's a lot of great young loose forwards um, in South Africa and um, also starting to play overseas, um, which I think uh, can be can be um, used before they go back to the golden oldies. I don't know if I if I ever can say no if, if they want me to 
to put my body on the line for the spin box. But what have you made of the, the recent results? We, we had a good test series in South Africa against the French, so I don't think it was the strongest French uh, side, um, having played with and against many of the players. So obviously, uh, and I think the, the box um, knew that. And the real test was going to be the championship. And we started really well, two wins against Argentina, which I thought is a much stronger side. And, and we, we, we played really well against them. A good draw in Australia, um, a match that you could have won as well. And obviously then the, the match against New Zealand, uh, I, I was unfortunately couldn't, couldn't watch the match. Um, but yeah, it, it hurts. It hurts to see um, the Springboks uh, taking a, a big hiding uh, from 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 it, from any team. How much does it hurt the likes of yourselves? I mean, you've been in that jersey. You've been in that situation. It's difficult to explain because I mean, in my heart, I know every player there just gave their best. Um, but unfortunately, I think all the external pressures. Um, on, on the spring box, on the team, just uh, uh, made that they were completely outplayed um, on the day. And I think we should uh, we shouldn't uh, we should take a look in the mirror and say, listen, so we may be not as good as we think, and uh, we should work harder. And uh, there's a lot of problems that we that we need to fix, and and we, there should be no excuses made. And uh, get the right people in to do the job um, and uh, just go out there and, and do it. And you said not everything is good in Paris. What do you miss the most? I mean, you're quite an outdoorsy person. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's, it's a bit more difficult to, to find good uh, fishing spots <laughs> and uh, places to go and uh, maybe do some hunting. But um, slowly but surely, we, I'm, I'm getting hold of the right people. and. Uh, um, but it's 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 just it's a big city. I'm more uh, a country country boy. So they didn't let you to get a fishing rod and uh, hit up the rivers in Fra in Paris, yeah? Or no, no, no. I have one. Have uh, um, it's actually a little fold-up rod, and I keep it uh, under the seat of my scooter. So whenever there's a good uh, spot of water, I can quickly test it out <laughs> and see if there's something that that's that's biting. And uh, you've got a young family as well. Uh, out in Paris, uh, two girls. What is it like being a dad and a rugby player? Do they understand yet what dad does? Uh, my um, oldest daughter is four years old now, so it's, I think she understands, but she just loves to come to watch the rugby because there's a lot of pink flags uh, waving around and she loves pink. So I don't even think she watches 10 minutes of the rugby, but that's all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's been a, a pleasure. pleasure talking. Thanks, Lance. Thank it's been great.